All right. Anyway, we're going to play The Last Flame. So if you didn't, I did publish a video for it last week. Um, originally, a plan had been to live stream this on this past Saturday. I was going to do a stream of Lone Star and Last Flame. And then Pal World went, came out and I was like, all right, we better do a stream of this to acknowledge its existence because it's going to be the hugest thing ever. But I'm still happy to do some live streaming for this because I think it's going to be kind of fun and kind of interactive and stuff like that. Um, so the core mechanics of this game is... A, again, that sort of slay the spire, monster train-ish kind of roguelite map man, um, um, maneuvering as well as unlocking additional content as you play more of the game. Um, but And then the actual battling is done in an auto-battler style, like Dota Auto Chess or Dota Underlords or Teamfight Tactics, or even arguably something like a Hearthstone, right? Hearthstone is an auto... Or, Hearthstone Battlegrounds is an auto battler, although in a fairly wildly different style. One of the things that's distinct about this is it is single player PVE. You don't have to queue up, play against other players. You've got all the time in the world to think about your moves. You can walk away and go to the bathroom, you know, that's because it's not in real time because you're not playing against other people, which is be brilliant, beautiful. Um, you don't need fast reflexes or anything of the sort, which I really appreciate. So we're going to jump in. So I've only played two games of this thus far. I did one practice game and then did the game that I recorded for the video, and that's it. So that was done on Novice, uh, but beating Novice did unlock Adept difficulty. So we're going to go ahead and jump into this. There's also this endless mode and a challenge mode as well, but we're going to play on the core ascension mode, especially since this is the thing that unlocks more difficulties and stuff. And in my opinion, it's the core gameplay. It is not multiplayer, wet dog. This is the one of the big defining characteristics of this versus... Um, most of the other auto battlers I can think of is that this is single player PVE, which changes the structure of lots of things. We're gonna start off by picking two heroes as well as a relic to get started. Um, and in the video I did for the Yub Tubs, we le le leaned heavily on physical and bleed because we happen to get quite a few characters um, to choose from that had some bleed right away. So we kind of based everything around that. So I'd like to get into a different direction, but we're gonna have to play the cards, the cards as they come. So let's see what we've got. Uh, we've got Pyro over here, who's a ranged person who specializes in spell damage that tends to do burn attacks. And then, so every third active ability, they cast their active ability twice. Oh yeah, so I should address how um, active ability works. So all the heroes here will auto attack. So you can see this person here attacks, um, the attack speed here, I think this is how many attacks per second they get. Um, so this person takes slightly more than a second to attack. So I think I think higher is better as a number here. And then, you know, they will attack with a ranged attack and do this much damage. The, we also got this mana bar over here. Characters go into the battle with, um, I think they start the battle with zero mana. Every time they attack, they generate a mana and also heroes can have a mana regeneration rate now not every character see orion over here doesn't actually have a mana regenerate right out of the box but azar and pyro do so this is how much regen they generate it's over 10 seconds so you can see the math here this hero will generate one mana every 3.33 seconds repeating of course shout out to any leroy jenkins is out there um so both attacking and the mana regen will do that every time they fill their mana pool they fire off their active ability is how I understand it. And I'm pretty sure is the way that it works. So Pyro here um, will cast a flaming meteor dealing damage to enemies hit. In addition on cast, Pyro gains three spell power for every stack of burn on the enemy with the most burn. So we got a splash damage attack here with the flaming meteor. And it the, this hero Pyro scales with burn. So if we could get other characters that are generating burn, Pyro would be a pretty good combat combo for that. We can see Blake over here does have the burn debuff icon. So these are just these icons are just sort of hints as to the character's buildup. And then we can take a look at their abilities over here. So Blake has got War Machine. Every attack, the hero gains two attack damage, uh, which stacks 15 times. At 15 stacks, the hero also gains 10% uh, life steal. And then they've got a Molten Knife ability, uh, which hits a very... A, a, chunk of enemies and inflicts to burn. So burn is just a debuff that stays on the enemy. So Blake would be someone who would empower Pyro. And then we could grab more burn. We could build around that. That's not bad. Um, Zico, I think we had in the YouTube video. So I'm going to, uh, well, I'm not sure. Did I have Zico in the YouTube video? I feel like I did, even though this person doesn't have any built, bleed stuff built in. I feel like we picked them up in there. Or maybe this was in my practice game, which could be. We did have Okar 
in our YouTube video. Okar's got a summon that he does. He summons wolves with his cast, and once he's got two wolves, then he just keeps empowering them. Um, oh, yeah, I had attack speed and crit. Yeah, that's right. And yeah, apparently this was made by one person. Um, I was looking through some things, and I guess um, some some of the assets were just from like asset store stuff, and some of it was like um, contracted out with some artwork people, I think, like that. I haven't dealt in. I don't know if this was I, I, this is an Unreal Engine project or a Unity project, both, both of which have really good um, um, app support from things, or like, yeah, build Zico as that. Uh, we've got a healer over here. So, I mean, we could go and build something with like a classic sort of tank dps healer combo but i kind of feel like i'm just gonna grab pyro and blake and let's let's burninate the countryside yeah burn also combos with ethereal damage if you look at the advanced tooltip um what was the button for that tab uh, oh probably if i mouse over burn hold on other ethereal damage from abilities and effects is increased by 1.5 percent per burn okay so the more burn we stack, the more bonus we get from Ethereal, which right now we don't have any, but that would be something to do. Let's do it. We'll take Pyro. We'll take Blake. And then, yeah, we get a Relic. So this works very similar to um, the items that you can get in Slate Aspire or some of the things you get in something like uh, Binding of Isaac, for example. These are these are not equipped to specific characters. They are just a global buff for us. So Distiller Tron, we can click it to convert trophies into money. Now, thus far... I haven't seen a strong argument for money being super important in this game. Um, instantly Aspire, grabbing gold is insanely good because whenever you hit a shop, gold can always be converted into extremely powerful stuff because you can use gold to buy relics in Slate Aspire as well as to thin out your deck. And sometimes you use it to buy cards, but adding more cards to your deck doesn't necessarily make you more powerful unless it's a part of a combo you're looking for. In this game, as far as I can tell, when you go to a shop, you can buy heroes and you can um, buy extra items. Um, and yeah, you're going to want some amount of items, but your heroes do cap out at five. And so I find that very quickly, I don't feel the need to purchase more heroes unless maybe I'm looking for an extra little combo. Um, and again, with the items early on, maybe a few, but then by the late game, I find it fills up. So I find there's like kind of a limit to how much money I feel like I actually need in this game compared to something like Slay the Spire. But I know that there are, um, when you navigate the map, there are the exclamation mark like events, and some of those can convert gold into something else. But it's not something I look for super highly, and the trophies are actually really good. So I think I want to go and do that. Banner collection. Whenever you pick an origin or change your origin, you heal for 25 flame. So, by the way, the way you lose the game here is running out of flame. Whenever one of your heroes dies in combat, uh, you lose some flame. And then if you run to zero, that's the end of your run. And to win the run, you got to go through basically three acts and defeat the final boss. Um, so, yeah, you heal and gain money. So, again, money generation. The healing's kind of nice. Firewood. You have an additional action at the campfire. Okay, that actually sounds pretty good. That might not make any sense yet, but once we get to a campfire, it, we'll see what it is. And this unlocks a new action at the campfire research. Choose a relic. It uses two campfire action. I really like this one because relics are, are these. They're things with passive buffs that just work all the time. More relics, more better, more always. So I'm going to take Tome of Secrets, and we will probably prioritize hitting as many campfires as possible to generate some extra relics going forward. It's sort of like comic book intro cutscene here, which I think is fantastic. And there we go. So we can see we got this sort of Slay the Spire map that we can navigate. We can choose where we go. I wish Slay the Spire had this. When you mouse over something to pick your path, it grays out what would no longer be available to you. Beautiful. Um, if we want to optimize our campfires, we can't go here. We want to take one of these two so we can hit this campfire and that campfire over there. Um, otherwise, these two don't make a difference. If I'm going to this campfire, it literally doesn't make a difference. So let's do that. We'll do three normal fights, campfire. We'll fight an elite, which I believe has a guaranteed relic drop as well. We'll go down this route, pick up an elite, a star monster, the campfire, and then fight the end boss. Sure, that seems good. Oh man, you got Hydra again? Yeah, I don't know if you can preview the boss from here or anything like that, and I certainly don't have them memorized, but let's go. Now, I've got the music muted on because I don't know how they license their music. For I guess I had the music playing the YouTube video and I never got flagged. So we must be okay. So we'll throw a little bit of just a, a soup song background music back there. Also, shout out to if anyone joined us from the uh, the Last Flame um, Discord. I just joined it and kind of advertised my stream. I don't usually do that, but I really like this game. And it, as far as I can tell, it hasn't got a lot of hype and a lot of attention. 
So I kind of I kind of want to, you know, promote it a little bit. All right. So we got Blake over here. We got Pyro over here. We can open up our hero panel again uh, if we want. And um, yeah, they're both range. We'll, we'll see about probably getting a melee because they'll probably be more optimal with that. So there's nothing really for us to do. They fire. They both have a range of three. I guess if I do this, they'll both start in range of the target. And uh, you can manipulate who's going to attack. Um, if it'll, the enemies will attack the closest one to them. And if there's a tie, what they'll do is they'll attack the most, the one you most recently moved. So you can see here, right? He's changing his target. I guess that was a little further away. I don't think it matters to us who he attacks. So we'll just go ahead and hit start. Done. Okay, let him on fire. Ta-da! Victory is ours. No one died. We didn't lose any hit points. We're gonna get some money and some trophies. We can pick a new hero, which we'll look at now. None of these have a icon for burn. Hybrid for physical spell damage. Oh, wait, no, there's a burn debuff icon there. And also frost. Eager, aren't you interesting? Although ethereal apparently combos well with burn. So that's something else we can look at. And here we've got a tank with support, which might also be good. Um, every single one of these is melee, so that's nice. Let's say, take a look at what Aegir does over here. Very nice. Every second attack inflicts one burn or one frost at random to all, all enemies? All enemies? When below 50% HP, attack consume two frost to heal. Okay, and a boomerang axe. Throws this boomerang axe, dealing damage in a line. Boomerang axe deals 5% additional damage per burn on the enemy hit. Okay, so Agar's damage definitely scales with burn, and he gets himself healed from frost, which doesn't seem like a bad thing. Kira over here. Every four seconds, the hero deals additional splash ethereal damage equal to 100% attack damage and inflicts two bleeds. Hey, I'm going to take Agar over here. And then we get to pick an item. Straight up attack damage, attack speed and max HP, attack damage and critical strike. Aegir. It's every second attack inflicts these things. And he's going to be frontlining as a melee. So I propose we get him the boots, which will give him more HP and more attack speed, which will proc his, his passive more. So I think that's going to be a good one. We're going to grab the leather boots. Oh, we get two items. And you can reroll as well at the cost of flame. We get more leather boots. We could grab a spellcaster item as well. So this doesn't decrease attack speed, but increases regen. If our casters aren't hitting very hard, and that is the case. Like, if we look at Pyro over here, his attack down at 45, right? Um, so we don't actually care how much damage he does. We want him to be able to spam out his fl flying, flaming meteor as often as possible. We could give him the regen because that'll cause him to proc this as often as possible. Um, that I think both these are options. I mean, this one with mana regen and spell power is also kind of tempting. I don't know. What do we think? We need that Twitch integration. <laughs> uh, Blake also wants to attack fast to build up the damage. Um. Oh, that's right. Every attack he gains damage. You know what? We'll get a set of boots for uh, for Blake as well. So that this one here is Blake, right? Yeah, Blake and then Eager. I mean, we could put both boots on the same person. Um, every character can have three items equipped. And as far as I can tell, there, there's no slots or anything like that. Someone could could all three of these slots could be boots. Doesn't make a difference. All right, let's proceed. All right, now we've got a Gravedigger over here, which has got a cleave. It doesn't matter because we only have one melee -er. Increases all enemies attack speed by 10%. It'd be nice to kill the bug first, but I'm not sure we can really position ourselves to do that, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not really. So that's fine. We'll just do this and at least we won't have to worry about um, any cleaves causing us some issues. Two for the feet, one for the head. Exactly. Or maybe they'll have a tail or something like that. There you go. We'll do that. We don't have to worry about this guy's cleave because he's just going to hit one person with it. Everything's to be fine. Easy peasy. I mean, one would hope the early fights are going to be pretty easy. Money. Another hero. Okay. None of these have a burn icon. Zots can shock people. So with shock, on cast, heroes have 1.5% chance per shock to stun their target, which is pretty good. Increases the duration of other stuns as well. I do like stuns. Where are the gains? Attack power. Attack damage equals 45% of their spell power. Okay. Flick shocks does that. Silas. Oh, I've used Silas before. So he's got the bleed. He's got um, some self-healing um, with these. So he's got these bleeds here. Hero, If the hero gets, gets or is below 50% max HP, they inflict 8 bleed on 
all enemies. This effect has a cooldown of seven seconds. Additionally, the first time each fight this effect triggers, you're also gains full mana. And then at full mana, they do cast Batstorm, leeches HP from nearby heroes and enemies. The amount leached per, from enemies is increased by 3% per bleed. The amount leached from heroes is capped at 40% of their HP and only occurs if Silas isn't full HP. Then we've got Xiphus over here. Zephus. So healing tank, crit mastery. Oh, and summons. I do like summons. Summons a water elemental. Every time the hero critical strikes with an attack, they summon a water elemental. Three water elementals are already summoned. They increase their attack damage by two. And they've got the leech life. I'd say for now, let's just take Zephus. We might sub them out if we get more burn heroes later on. But we'll get Zephus for now because he sounds like fun. And we'll see if we can stack some crit on him. He's got a 30% crit chance to start off with. Okay, so these are recipe items. These, what we do is you merge the recipe with one of the items we already have, and they combine together. Um, well, this is interesting. For doing burn, apparently ethereal damage uh, is a pretty good um, combination. So we could take the smoldering uh, armor. So every second wearer deals additional ethereal damage equal to 60% defense. So we'd want to stack a bunch of defense, ideally, to make use of this. Alternatively, we grab the crystal staff and we just throw in our caster, which I kind of like. Six percent chance per max mana to gain. So right now, uh, let's say we've got seven. So that's thirty-five percent chance every two seconds to gain mana. Doesn't generate. Doesn't represent a ton unless our max mana goes up. Um, yeah, it'd be the best item to put on Pyro because he's got the highest max mana right now, but not even that high. Forty-two percent. Oh, you're right. Yeah, I was doing it times five, times six. So, of these, I think both of these are options. Tell you what, I'll take the Crystal Staff. No, no, I'm going to just smolder armor. And I'm not sure that I'm going to craft it right now. We might just hold it in our back pocket and consider what might happen next. Got a reminder here that we do have some trophies available to us. Um, what trophies can do, so if we mouse over here, you can see that Pyro here is sitting at, it says four of 20, you see that? So at 20 XP, Pyro will level up. You can spend trophies to add five XP on someone. Um, so we've got enough trophies to level up, well, I mean, literally anyone over here. Let's assume that we're gonna be mostly working with our Burninators. So let's go, I'm just gonna go ahead and level up Pyro to level two. And when you level up, you get to pick one new trait over here. Hero gains ethereal infused attacks. Their attacks now deal ethereal damage instead of physical damage. They can still critical strike. Any additional damage from bleeds, both lifesteal and magic steal affect ethereal. But when the fight starts, the hero loses 20% attacks damage. Maybe. Sunning attack. Every attack has a 15% chance to stun its target. Every two attack, the hero inflicts one shock to all enemies. Also, every time the hero stuns a target, they inflict one shock to all enemies. That's interesting. Um... These two cards would really be best on someone with a fast attack rate, which Pyro doesn't have. I mean, Pyro doesn't hit very hard either, so turning his attacks ethereal isn't going to mean that much regardless, but I, I guess it's kind of... maybe? We will have the option of swapping traits later. What we could do is we could grab something like a stunning attack with the intention of moving it to someone who's got a faster attack rate but down the road. Screw it, I'm just gonna do this. Okay. Um, comp wise, we got a couple of skeleton archers. We get the giant bug again that buffs everyone else's attack. I would really like to focus on killing this giant bug first. Um, right, it's Eager and Zephyrus. Who are our mailer? Let's just set up like this. Um, maybe like this. Make sure. I think, yeah, you're going to go down here, which is fine. But everyone else should target the giant buff, get rid of their stuff. All right, let's go. I don't know if you explained this in the YouTube video, but how do heroes get XP normally? Actually, I don't know. I don't know if they get XP per fight or per kill. Um, there's a guidebook. I don't know.
I sort of assumed it was per fight, but I actually don't know. All right. So this will bring us to five, which is the most heroes we can have on the board at the time. Um, but we can have some more on the bench, so we could potentially still, you know, sw swap some things in and out, depending on what shows up. All right, Gerald over here is melee, support, all about them crits. Every time the hero crits with an attack, they gain five gold. Okay, they do start off with 45% crit rate. We have someone else who would already be interested in crit items, though, so they might be fighting with one another. Gerald performs critical forging. Nearby heroes gain critical strike chance for five seconds. I mean, that's interesting. Nuala is ranged caster, self healer with bleeds. Joanna, range caster with some more summons and frosty buffs. I mean, do we just go with like fire and ice as a theme right now? I mean, again, we can always focus another way. What I like about Joanna is she's going to add some AoE, which we don't really have. We do have a little bit of AoE, but I think it's a, a small area. This is a much bigger area. And we got some more summons too. Hero gains force power per summon on the battlefield, not just her own, but any summon. So she would scale well there. Yeah, how about fire, ice and fire and sing about it? A song of fire and ice? Yeah. Okay, so these are an item, not a recipe, but these are uncommon as opposed to common, so they're going to be a little bit better. Um, hmm, some good options. I love mana regen because it lets our abilities get off more quickly. Although I feel like generally my casters don't get targeted down the same way, so I don't know if I value the defense quite as highly as others. The heavy helmet, I mean kind of a nice one for maybe a frontliner. Novice's Staff is interesting, though, because it's spell power and crit chance. I'm kind of tempted to just add a ton more damage. Now, I can't remember who's our crit guy. Sorry, I have a hard time sometimes following my own things while I'm talking. Um, critical Strikes. So it is you. Your Life Leech does scale up with spell power. I don't know if scaling Zephyrus' spell power is the most important thing in the universe, but scaling his crit's going to be kind of nice. So let's let's get the staff. We'll throw it on Zephyrus for now. And it might move to someone else later. But I think that's going to be okay. Attack speed and crit chance. See, I like this because, again, a good option for Zephyrus because he'll attack faster, which means m more likely to generate more critical strikes and then higher chance as well. I think I'll just pick this up and I think I'll throw them both on Zephyrus. There you go, buddy. All right, so we're going to go to the campfire. So two things can happen in a campfire. First of all, you can pick an origin, um, and then also you can swap your origin if you if you already had one. So Corrupted, all heroes gain 2% attack damage per max mana on the hero with the highest max mana. Hero with the highest max mana, I think it's still a 7. Yeah, we got a couple of them with a 7. So we don't have anyone with super high max mana, but... Ice Riders, heroes and effects inflict twice the amount of frost on enemies. When the fight starts, heroes lose 10% attack speed. Mm. Reborn, whenever a hero gets below 55 HP, the hero gains 35% attack damage and 25% lifesteal. Swarm Lord, for every summon on the battlefield, all heroes gain 5% attack damage. I mean, we are kind of stacking summons again, so we got a few different things going on, but they're not bad. Concealed, for every 600 shield done, we, we don't have any shield tech going on, so I think we'll skip that. Whenever a hero gets below 50% HP, their mana regen gets tripled. Now that's very interesting. So two of our heroes here don't have any mana regen. The other three do. Three, three, and two over here. So that's actually kind of interesting. I like Swarm Lord. I like Portal Master. Reborn's pretty good too. How do you generate mana without mana regen? Every auto attack generates one mana. I mean, who doesn't love summons? Okay. We could always, next time we camp, we'll get an opportunity to change our origin. But for now, we'll think maybe we stack, um, maybe we stack summons. So the other thing we've got at the camp is we have two actions here. We could have taken the relic that gave us a third action. Remember that. We can rest, which heals 25 flame, but I'm max, so I don't need to do that. That takes one action. We could enchant. This will turn a rare item into an epic item. Now, currently, we don't have any rare items, so there's no reason to do that. Well, that's not true. I could, because I could forge the smoldering armor. In hindsight, I probably should have taken the staff. I don't know what I want to merge this with. I was thinking smoldering armor would be good to merge with something that gives a bunch of defense. So 
I probably still won't bother. Now that would take one action, so we could do that twice. But then, because we've got the Toma of Secrets here, we can research. Takes two actions, but it finds a relic. So, I mean, obviously we're gonna do that. I got a Ghost Pepper. All heroes gain 20% attack speed, but lose 25% attack damage. That's interesting, because overall the damage would probably work out to about even-ish, right? But this Ghost Pepper would trigger things that is like every second or every third attack do blah, and we've got some of those. It would also, you know, more attacks equals more crits, which procs more things. We actually are kind of probably fine with dumping attack damage to gain attack speed. Because again, the actual DPS will kind of even out, but anything that procs off attacks will be better. Mana Vial. Whenever mana regen generates mana, they have a 30% chance to generate additional mana. All heroes gain 20% attack damage. Fishing Rod. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Team size increased by one, so we can have six heroes on the field? All heroes hit damage for 15% max HP when the fight starts. So everyone's a little squishier, but we have an extra person. Now, more heroes and squishier heroes does mean that there's a greater chance that I lose flame when they die. Um, This would work really well if we had more heroes with self-heal or the ability to heal their friends. Now, currently we just have, I think we just have one self-healer in Zephyrus. But we could go fishing for another hero that maybe got some team heal with this. So I don't think we've got the right comp for Mana Vial right now, but all three of the others are pretty nice. None of these are more summons. No, it's not too much. And I mean, this uh, obviously would be better if we had some good like, heavy hitters, especially physical. So do we try the fishing rod? It's crazy. Let's try it. So the fishing rod's not gonna do anything for us in this fight. In fact, it's gonna make things worse because we still just got the five heroes and now they're gonna start with reduced hit points as we go into an elite fight. But, so it's a bit of a bit of a YOLO move. But let's see what we can do. I think we'll probably look to spend some trophies. So we got a pair of Thief Devils. Time Shock, stun all heroes for one second. Stealer Duo, steals one gold every time it attacks. Whenever Devil Thief dies, it loses 50% attack speed. Okay, so we really want to burn one down as fast as possible. Um, so I think we'll just end up clumping everyone again. We'll just go with something like this. And I will be looking to spend trophies. Uh, one, two, three, we'll level you up. And then I got two more, which is another 10 HP, which isn't enough. All right, what did you get here? Speedy Company, all summons. Gain attack speed equal 10% of the hero's shield. Oh, we don't generate shield. Although this would self-generate 180 shield, but then we don't have any more than that. So I don't know. Magic potion. Every four seconds, the hero heals the lowest percentage HP for 60 plus 50 percent spell power. Oh, hello. Red drakes. Ah, when the fight starts, the hero summons two red drakes. The hero gains four attack damage per summon on the battlefield. I love more summons, but we were just talking about the fact that a Team-based healing would be great for our comp. Everyone's going to start damaged. So having someone who can, like, pick people up again is going to be great. Let's do this. I, although I do want more summons, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead with this. I'm going to grab the magic potion. And so spell damage on this dude would be very good. I think I might... I'm going to leave the um, the crit staff on. Uh, I think I'm going to leave the crit staff there, but we'll we'll consider looking to that. Fragment of Truth. Toggling this on to obtain a fragment of truth. You need to obtain all three star fragments of truth to unveil the mystery. What? Toggling this on will increase the HP of all enemies in the fight by 25%. Only use it if you feel prepared enough to next challenge. First fragment can be obtained from normal and star counter. Second from elite. Third from boss. Well, I'm not going to use this now because this is going to be a tough fight for, or a tougher fight for us because we're going to start with the, you know, the, the health penalty here. Okay, I got to get a move on if we're going to finish this run within the uh, the duration of a stream. We're definitely taking a lot of damage here. Here's the massive group stun, like our entire group got stunned, which isn't great. But we're going to take you down, which is going to debuff this guy. You can see the heals go off here, especially with the self heal over there. Okay, good. We didn't lose anyone. We didn't take any flame damage. So we get money. Oh, we didn't get another hero. Okay, another shot at the Crystal Staff, Dwarf and Mace. On cast, the Werewolf gains 10% attack damage. Plus 50% Ethereal Amplification. With the Ethereal damage? I 
don't know if there's a symbol for it. Did we not take the ethereal damage dealer? No, I don't think so, did we? Must have skipped out on it. Yeah, I think the fragment's truth like keys and slay spire is what I'm assuming. Uh on cast gain attack damage. Yeah, good call. Let's reroll. Gains 50 attack damage, 50 spell power, and their range increased by one. When taking damage from an enemy, this effect is lost for the rest of the fight. Ugh. Whenever possible, the wearer consumes 150 shield gain. I'm going to reroll one more time. Huh. We could give this necklace to Zephyrus. So he'd regen mana faster, which means he'd fill his mana pool more often, which means he'd cast Life Leech more often and heal himself up again. That's very interesting. Every second consume the wearer's HP equal 2% max HP to deal spell damage to all nearby enemies equal three times the HP consumed. Critical strikes deal additional ethereal damage equal to three times the amount of debuffs on the enemies. We are putting some debuffs on there. I think we grabbed the Enchanted Claw. And I'm wondering about... Uh, do I combine it with the Novice Staff? Because ideally I'd like to combine it with an... Um, with a rare item. It's based on crits. I think we take the Enchanted Claw for Zephyrus. So, we're, oh, uh, what is our relic? Applies three shock every four seconds to all enemies. Deal 50 damage per shock to the enemy with the most shock every four seconds. All heroes gain 160 max HP and get healed for the same amount. So I'm assuming at the start of the fight, it gives them 160 HP and fills it. That's kind of nice, especially if we're going to have a lot of heroes. All heroes gain three mana regen, but lose 20 attack damage. That's a lot of regen. This would be quite good if we were really stacking a lot of magic damage. I think I like the mask. So let's do the enchanted um, enchanted claw with the staff. So what it's going to do, it's going to combine it. So we'll get an item with the crit chance, the spell power, and when it hits, it deals bonus ethereal damage. Yeah, that's fine. And we're going to give it to you over there. And anyway, we get a nice fight recap, getting a breakdown of who does the most damage and what. It's very handy. Okay, so we're going to campfire some more because what we're looking for is to use our book to get more free relics. So we're going to go this way. All right, Burb, I don't think we're worried about anything over here. Four star enemy deals spell damage to the target and heals for what? Yeah, okay, whatever. Just burn it down. Might want to level up our frontliners. They're the ones, you know, most likely to take more damage. Attack speed. Each attack the wearer has 3% chance per shock and bleed on the enemy. That has the most of these to gain a shield equal to 3% max HP. Lightbringer. Every three seconds the wearer gains spell power equal to their max mana. Every attack the wearer deals ethereal damage equal to three times the amount of frost and burn. Oh, no, we're going to take the ritual axe. Combo as well with what they're doing. Oh, yes, I know about advanced tooltips. Thank you. Um, this scales well with extra attack speed. You know what? I think I'll just combo with the, um, the pistol. I'll give it to you again. And I'm going to use some trophies to bring you up a level. All right, you guys are... Oh, the defensive ritual stuff. Remove two mana from all heroes. Well, that's annoying. Again, I'm mostly just going to stack my people in closest proximity so that we can just 
focus fire one down as quickly as possible. Oh, right, you level up. What do you get? Blue Drakes, more summons. Uh, this hero would gain spell power, which would increase the amount of heal he does. I don't know that stacking massive amounts of spell power on Zephyrus is critical. Where gains attack damage equal to 45% of their spell power. Okay, well, I mean, you've already, you, we, it does help. Every time the hero critical it strikes, hold on. We're stacking critical strike chance on Zephyrus. Every time Zephyrus would crit, all heroes would gain 1% attack speed. Yeah, okay. Team speed. Let's go. Zephyrus is being targeted by multiple things, but does have the self heal. Oh, he's going to go down. She'll cost us some flame here. Oh, we might lose another frontliner. Just barely held out. Another item. Okay, so Harvester's shield, we are kind of looking for something that maybe has got some defense to merge up with the smoldering armor. So I think this might be a good pick. We're going to do that, although tons of HP and the pistols again are kind of synergizing what we're doing, but we'll grab this so we can finish a recipe. Lots of spell power, decrease attack speed. I don't think we're looking for that. Attack damage and defense. We could also reroll, but of course we have taken some damage here. Um, I mean, that would be another thing that we could potentially forge with this if we wanted. Money for Essentia. Money for Essentia. Hey, Lucal, thank you. Turns out my I finished nursing school message in December didn't account for a particularly petty, vindictive professor. Onwards. So, congratulations now? I hope. Jeez, Loon Call. Wow. Oh, congrats, I guess. <laughs> oh, man. Or you having to go back for like a whole other semester or something like that. Um, change to nurse villain. Um, we could reroll. I mean, these are fine, though. I might just get a heavy helmet for uh, one of our front lighters, maybe on Agar. I think I'll just do that. Let's just do something. Okay, pick a relic. Maybe I should look at the relics first. All heroes attacks inflict burn on all, on all enemies, but heroes lose 40% attack speed. I think that's too brutal. I don't know what this symbol means. I haven't figured that part out yet. Magma Stone. All enemies lose one burn every two seconds. All heroes and summons gain 300% burn damage amplification. For example, if enemy has 10 burn, heroes and summons will deal 40 damage instead of 10 damage per attack. Huh. Oh, you think it might be lost on death? I have a glossary, but not for symbols. I'm trying to, like, have and stuff. Okay, flute. All heroes start gaining 450 shield, but lose 350 XP, uh, HP when the fight starts. This might not be so bad. Oh, the red tombstone you have to sacrifice another relic for. Oh, okay. Regen ticket. So this actually places two of these on the map. And so what we need to do is put, make sure to start our fight with our heroes on those spots. It means we lose a lot of control over where our heroes start. On the other hand, those are pretty powerful effects. We just drop two heroes in those and they get a ton of mana regen. But I'm wondering about the flute because the shield, I mean, the shield is worth more than the amount of HP we lose. And we have healing to replenish some of the HP. And this gives us the ability to potentially start comboing the shield stuff. I'm very tempted by this. I don't think there's a relic I'm hoping I would be comfortable trashing right now to gain one of these. Although the Magma Stone's interesting. I'm just going to take the flute. And at some point, I just, I've got to, you know, just shut up and pick something. Uh, I'm going to forge you. Both of these have 20 defense. Um, I guess every second. No, I don't, I don't think it matters. Other than who's got the highest defense currently? Well, Zephyrus. I'm a little bit worried that we're, we're going to be a little um, um, full up on items on Zephyrus if we're going to keep focusing on crit slash maybe attack speed. So I'm going to ignore you. agar has got the next highest defense. And you are a mainliner, so it kind of makes sense to give you a defensive item. Um, and you don't care about spell power as much. So I'm going to give you the attack helmet with smoldering armor equipped onto it. 
And I'll give you the Harvester Shield at the same time. All right. No, we'll do that. Self-healing plus a little bit more defense. You're going to be really hard to kill, which is going to be ideal. Okay, we're going to find an elite. Big Uzi guy. It summons a slime that has 33% of its max HP and 50% of its attack damage. Slime has no ability. Okay. And the Scepter's Nocturnal Flame, best targeting deals, spell damage to a hero's hit. I think the ideal would be to burn down these two specters first. Might be a little tricksy to position things to do that. I mean, maybe we could at least do one. do this to tank you. I think this is okay. Um, and I think I was thinking, yeah, we've got two trophies, which is exactly enough to level you up to another rank. All heroes gain 1% critical strike chance for every summon on the battlefield. Every critical strike, the hero's critical strike chance is increased per summon. I mean, this makes this person stack a lot more. Crit. Every critical strike hero heals for 3% of max HP and heal summons. I think we take critical cooperation to increase everyone's crit rate for summon, and we do have a few. That will continue to increase Zephyrus' crit rate, which is very nice. So we're gonna do this. Okay. So lost some health, but gained some shield. In theory, we've got some healing going on. We're a little clumped. So we are taking some heavy AoE damage here, but not too shabby of a fight. Yeah, all crits, all day. Choose reward. Ah, yeah. So here's what I said. At some point, we'll get the ability to swap passes between two different heroes. We can also reroll them or choose a new hero. And we can get another hero. I think we should. We need to do this because we want to go up to six heroes because we can fit six heroes. Now, I think sometimes you do get offered a new hero in some of these fights. I don't know if it's random or if it's only certain kind of fights or what the deal is but we didn't see one of those i think we have no choice but to recruit a hero here because we need an extra uh ola's got the little burn icon here so another melee hero gains one mana regen for every three max mana they have so this is someone who you naturally stack a bunch of max mana on which is normally bad but there are, are items that give you more mana regen while increasing your max mana ola performs the dragon dance oh i remember that from avatar uh, gaining 2% attack damage per max mana. She deals damage to her target and inflicts two burns over two strikes and then inflicts damage to nearby enemies and inflicts one burn over one strike. In addition, Dragon's Dance scales with attack damage as well as spell power. Okay, you are a very interesting person, Ola. I think we're going to grab them. See, Assassin's Knife is quite interesting, right? It gives you attack speed and increasing max mana. Again, increasing max mana, normally bad, not so bad on Ola. Where it loses 50% attack damage at the start of the fight. Huh. Spellblade. Every four attacks, the wearer gains attack damage equal to 20% of their spell power. Summoner's Cloak. I like summons. Attack speed and every three seconds heals all summons for 100 HP. I mean, come on. We're going to take this. We're going to figure out what to do with you. We are going to hit this camp. Uh, we could consider swapping. So right now we got Swarm Lord. Every hero gains 5% attack damage per summon. It's not bad. Heroes gain percentage attack damage equal to 7% of the team's defense. I mean, we do start with the... Oh, no, I'm getting mixed up between shield and defense. Which, maybe. Stun enemies take more damage. If we were building a heavy shock team that was generating a lot of stuns, this would be really good. Warmonger. All heroes gain critical strike chance equal to the team's bonus mana regen. Okay. Excess critical strike damage above 100% becomes critical strike damage. Spectral. All heroes gain ethereal amplification equal to 40% of the team spell power. And again, burning people take more ethereal damage, and we are doing some burns. We have some summons. We don't have infinite summons. Now, we could get more summons by taking Archaic, which I did in my previous two runs. So this summons a dinosaur when team starts. Dinosaur has 20% of the team's total max HP and attack damage. Gains 10% attack speed for every summon on the battlefield. And this actually counts as four summons. It's one physical summon on the board, but it counts as four. Spellweaver. All heroes gain spell percentage spell power equal to 20% attack damage of the hero with the highest attack damage. So 
I propose we do replace Swarmlord. I kind of like the dino. Our, admittedly, our board might be getting a little full since we'll have six heroes. Plus the summons. We'll be vulnerable to AoE, but who doesn't have a dinosaur? Yeah, let's do it. We could also uh, spend... This is my first time, by the way, hitting an origin when I've got one. I'd always assumed it was actually a replacement, but until now, I wasn't actually sure. I was like, maybe we can have two, but yeah. We're going to switch origins. This is going to be fine. We could have used an action to reroll the origins as well, but this is fine. And then we'll research and pull a new relic. Ethereal Amplification. All heroes gain six spell power for each summon on the battlefield. All heroes get plus 40% shield received. That's interesting. So presumably that would make the flute a lot more powerful. We don't do shields otherwise. But maybe? Heroes gain 40% critical strike chance, but lose 40% attack damage. We do do a lot of crit stuff, but I don't think I want to do this. Probably stone wings. Sort of a freebie. Yeah, the, the home shielding is okay. If we had any heroes that were generating their own shields, I'd probably do this. It would still be okay with the flute, but we'll go with the wings. Just because. Okay, before... Well, let's go to the boss. So yeah, indeed, we're fighting the Hydra here. He's got a couple of buddies. Nocturnal Spectres, we just saw those. So they try to nuke things. We'll probably just try to burn them down instantly. And the Hydra... Cast Poison Breath, dealing 180 spell damage in a cone in front of them. I think when we fought the Hydra in the last video, I think they were centered up, which was great to avoid the cone. This might be a little trickier. I think we just throw the Summoner's Cloak on the boots, because it's obviously going to be going to someone who scales well with more attack speed. And we want this... Yeah. I mean, the... The other ability, every three seconds heal all summons, literally doesn't matter who what character is on. Because it has no impact, doesn't use the character's stats, doesn't base itself on attacks or anything like that. But, oh yeah, we'll check the other trait on the Hydra. So we'll just do this. And then... Does anyone else... We'll probably throw it on Blake. Hide your rage. Always targets the lowest HP hero. Ah, okay, so we can't ta taunt you. All right, that's fine. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead with plan. You are also melee, right, Ola? Yeah. We're going to go with plan. Burn down these two dudes. ASAP. Now, trophy-wise... There's no obvious contenders... Really? We're going to give you regen. And Brian brings some people to level two. For missing HP, you gain extra mana regen every time you crit. And I mean, we do have, we do have the thing uh, for crit stacking from one of our characters. For every 500 HP lost during the fight gains life steal. Um, time manipulation's fine, but I think I'll take team speed. Because um, you don't have, sorry, I meant to right click. You don't have the greatest crit chance as a base here, Jonah, Joanna, but you are going to get a crit bonus from one of the other characters. And this will just keep, maybe we keep sort of stacking these team buffs. It's fine. Uh, that might be a good candidate for moving that trait to someone else later on, right? If we could take this trait, move it over to Zephyrus, who does have a huge crit rate. All right, let's go. Yeah, the Hydra's just going to try to kill one person at a time. Well, you moved because this person took some extra damage. But we do have an item that heals the person with the lowest percentage HP, which is going to do good things. Uh, we are not going to lose anyone. Not going to lose anyone. Pretty nice. There's a recruit here. I guess maybe it's when we kill a boss, we get to recruit another hero. So this person will go on the bench. So let's start with the relics first and see what we got. You can now research at the shop. Choose a relic. It costs eight trophy. After each fight, you heal for three fame and get an additional trophy. I do like the juicy mango here. Curse gold bar. Upon picking up the relic, you gain 1,600 gold. Upon entering combat, if you have more than 1,000... All heroes get stunned for two seconds. 
Now, again, I don't really value gold in this game that highly. You can reroll and refill items at the shop for 50 gold. I'm kind of tempted by just taking the juicy mango for extra trophies. And a little bit of heal. I mean, we got topped off after the boss fight, but... Researching at the shop is interesting because it generates relics, but it costs trophies. I, I, I really like engineering plans, but I'm not sure how viable it's going to be for us to generate this. So we'll take the juicy mango. We get our first legendary recipe. The wearer gains extra heal and extra shield, and the range is increased by one. When taking damage from an enemy, the effect is lost for the rest of the fight. I wonder, does losing shield count as taking damage? Because we've seen another item in this run that gets disabled when you take damage. I'm wondering if we just have enough shield that that gives you protection. Now, the Mask of the Druid, where it gains 15% spell power per summon in the battlefield. We're doing summon shit. King's Ring, grants an aura around the wearer. Heroes inside the aura gain 25% attack speed. Wearer loses 450 HP when the fight starts. We're going to take the Mask of the Druid. I don't know who we're going to put it on. Um, you are awfully cute. Range, support, caster, healer. Every time the hero... Oh, you come with team speed! Every time the hero critical strikes, all heroes gain 1% attack speed. Now, here's what I'm wondering. These can stack up to 10 times. What, ha what happens if you have multiple team speeds? And I don't know if there's a way for us to test this. Let's say we had four team speeds. Would they each be able to stack 10 times for a 40% attack speed bonus? Or is it have a maximum 10% stack? So getting multiple of these, I mean, helps you get to the max faster, but is maybe otherwise a waste. We really have no way of knowing. Moonwrath. On our current target, dealing damage to all enemies hit and healing all heroes hit. I do like that part. Hmm. Orion, yeah, so electric attack every two attack inflicts shock to all enemies. Uh, deals concussion strike to its current target, stunning the target for two seconds and taunting it. Also heals. Al excess heals converted to a shield, and all heroes also get half that shield amount. That's kind of cool. And might fit in fairly well with our group. And then, yeah, every time you stun someone, you inflict more shock on more enemies. You'd be a good candidate, maybe even for mana region, just so that you keep. Um, triggering your concussive strike over and over. St like stunning, generating more shocks, and then healing in an AoE, like with and generating shield. What about Emily here? Melee, ethereal damage dealer, caster. Astral Sword, the hero's attacks deal additional ethereal damage equal to spell power. And again, burn increases ethereal damage. Emily could become a huge damage dealer for us. Stack spell power, and you know, maybe attack speed. Great Sword of Light. Emily casts a great sword of light, dealing damage in a line for each enemy hit. Now, it's not going to be very often that people are in a line. We're not really getting to position things that carefully, but maybe. For each enemy hit, Emily gains five spell power. If only one enemy is hit, she gains 25% ethereal amplification instead. Oh, well, that's fine. Oh, because I don't trust that team speed will stack well for us. Does it list the modifiers when hovering over the attack speed of heroes? Maybe in combat? Um, I'm not going to take Elreal because of that, even though I think the Moonwrath is kind of cool. I think I'm going to take Emily and see if we can do some crazy stuff with Ethereal. Ethereal and Burn. Although I think Orion has great value as well, and I do love stuns. I know, what do we think? They're both melee. I think I want to experiment with the Ethereal. Although, oh, the shield shit is crazy. Chat wants Emily. All right, Emily it is. Done. Excellent. Now, do we currently have any items that accelerate? Oh, right, and then we'd have to sub someone out, too. I forgot about that part of it. Oh, yeah, we can dismiss someone. Uh, we do get the experience back in the form of trophies. We did the least damage, Ola. Now, admittedly, Ola's just level one with no items, so, you know. You do generate more burn, which I like. Who's second worst? Joanna. Joanna does provide summons for us. 
feels a little unfair and doesn't have any items currently. Summer out. I mean, we lose two of our summons, but maybe that's not a big deal. And I'm not sure how important the. the... Oh, I don't think. I think I got to go to the next screen. Or you sub out a melee, so. Or Ola, because it's melee is melee. Um, again, we want to kind of optimize campfires. Well, no matter what, we're going to hit two campfires. We went this route, we could check out a bunch of these exclamation marks. Well, this this one only. It's not that, because we'd still want to hit this campfire. We have never hit a shop, so we could do this. We should probably hit a shop. We've got a bunch of money. We we'll probably want to get some recipes. I'll do this. It'll keep our options open. All right, let's bring her in. Now... The Enchanted Claws deal additional ethereal damage. Deals ethereal damage. None of these scale up the amount of the ethereal damage we do. On the other hand, Emily, with her Great Sword of Light, could gain ethereal amplification. So we could consider moving these items over to her. The problem is they both increase um, critical strike chance, which I really do want to have on Zephyrus. So maybe I won't move anything quite yet. Six trophies. Oh, do I want to use them? Well... I think you're going to keep being a star of the show there, Zephyrus. Also, I was really hoping we'd run a roll a crit chance. I think we give you defense. I think we keep making you super tanky. Because you self-heal. So, effectively, by having good defense, you're healing more, right? Because if you're healing 100 HP on someone with no defense, it's just worth 100 HP. If you're healing 100 HP on someone with high defense, that might be effectively worth two or 300 HP. On the other hand, we give them mana gen so they can trigger um, the leech life more often. Life steal is not going to be as ne necessary. More higher max HP does give you more of a window to keep replenishing your health. Oh, you drain your health. Hang on, you drain your health from your summons. Although it scales up with spell power. I think I missed that. So no, we just mostly just want to stack crits. I'm going to give you defense. Oh yeah, um, okay. Orc warrior is going to move forward. He's going to target here. I think this is going to be perfect. This Orc Warrior is going to move here to attack Agar. Actually, let me swap these two around. He's going to move forward here to attack Zephyrus, and then Emily will be perfectly in line to hit all three of these. All right, let's just go. Um... She didn't fire the line attack in the direction that I anticipated. Okay, so this is quite interesting, this improvised staff, right? Who is it that was scaling with max mana? It was Ola who we've pulled back. Who doesn't... Re uh, she does scale with spell power. But maybe less enticing. The musket is a bunch more crit chance. Or the caster's cloak.
I think we grab the musket and we throw it on Zephyrus, and then we can put the Harvester's Shield on someone else. Why is max mana red? Because max mana is normally bad. Because the way it works, you start at zero mana, and every time your mana fills up, you cast your spell. So the higher max mana, the less often you cast your spell, which is why it's normally bad, which is why it's in red. Yeah, you know what? We'll do this. Um, Spell power, mana gen. Tell you what, I'll take this one, and I'll throw that one on Pyro. Pyro, you're going to get this amulet. Zephyrus, you're going to replace your shield this way. And I'll give the shield to... Um, I guess got some defense. We'll give it up to Emily, another melee person with some extra defense. That seems fine. Yeah, it's really interesting because normally in games, I'd be like more mana, more better, right? But it's actually really neat in this game the way that that works. I think it's cool. Uh, Fragment's Truth. Yes, we did notice the toggle. Thank you. Spell damage to nearby heroes and heals for that. Mm. Well, I mean, we can mostly just do it again by just overloading you as quickly as possible. Now, this will mean there'll be a lot of nearby heroes for you to heal from. But we also kill you faster. Unless I just move Zephyrus out over here. Yeah, there you go. That way it's one less person for you to heal from. Yeah, I might just do this. You like that weird max mana concept? Yeah. It's just a power meter that you got to fill up every time. Yeah, this is fine. Oh, that AoE actually hit pretty well. well we gotta kill this guy before he does it again because he could wipe out, okay, a few people. We're getting a little low there. Spell power gains 1% spell power per missing HP. On cast, the wearer's max mana is increased by two and their attack damage is increased by two times their max mana. That is very, again, with Ola, right? That would be a really interesting item with Ola. But we're currently not running her. Do we grab the Dark Scythe? I mean, just a little bit of spell power is fine. And then as you take damage, we actually start the fight with reduced health because of the flute, which means the Dark Scythe would immediately increase the spell damage of Pyro. Game really wants you to use Ola. I know, right? Like, may maybe? Maybe? Ola is a sheep. Ola is a male name in Sweden. Oh, um, I don't know. We shouldn't assume, I suppose. But I think it, like, I kind of do the, like, kind of, like, Latin thing where, like, oh, a, a word ends with an A, therefore it must be feminine. And, I mean, does they do appear to have boobs. But, again, we shouldn't, we shouldn't assume. Um, unless there's, like, a... Unless there's a bio card that we can access for these heroes in here. Um, I, it, yeah, again, I, I feel like I had to go pretty fast here because I'm running out of time for things. So we're going to grab the scythe. Was it a scythe recipe? It was a scythe recipe. Well, let's combine it with the spell amulet. Oh, I forgot I never used the freaking mask of the druid. We got it. The problem is because the recipes don't show up down here. I forget that we, they exist. Um, yeah, we have to use that immediately. Where gain spell power? And spell power, spell power. Okay. I don't think I really care who this gets necessarily paired up with. Like that. Heaven's Illusion, you have all the time. You do generate your own spell power here, Pyro. The splash damage is pretty cool. Heck, you build your own summons, we should give you that. Joanna's the best girl, she comes with dragons, she does come with dragons. Alright, let's do this. Um, so yeah, either way, like, we'll get the campfire. Like, we'll get either this campfire or this campfire, and I want to get that one over there. Let's go and visit our shop. We haven't done a shop yet, let's do that. See how it works out. So, you can see here, we can buy baseline items, we can buy recipes to combine, and we can get some extra characters here if we felt like there was some combo missing. I'm not going to stress about the heroes. We can also dismantle items here. Um, so, the recipes, if we forge something together and we want to, like, undo that, we could do that now. 
and I think, yeah, we select the item we wish to dismantle. I don't remember if we get to keep both parts of it. I think we might. So, for example, if we had a better base item for the Mask of the Druid, because the base item here is just a gray as opposed to a green, we could dismantle it and then redo it. That's a lot of spell power. Reducing attack speed does affect your mana regen effectively because you do get one mana every time you whack something. Um, but that's a lot of spell power. Or just a crap ton of mana regen. Okay. That's crit damage. We're not... I mean, obviously, crit damage goes well with increased crit strike chance, but right now we're mostly just interested in crit strike chance. And I'm mostly just interested in the green items, which are going to be a little bit better. When the fight starts, the wearer gains 6% max HP and heals for a third of that amount. Okay, so your max HP goes up. It doesn't fully fill that completely, but that's not so bad. This would actually be an interesting combo with the item that gives you extra spell power per missing HP percentage because we'd start the fight missing even more HP because it gives us as a percentage when the fight starts the wearer gains 130% spell power but their max mana increases by 50% <laughs> these Ola items right uh dark guard lose attack speed every two seconds the wearer gains 20 defense and deals ethereal damage equal to 150% defense to their target every attack the wearer loses 10 defense these are interesting items 30% chance to inflict a burn on all enemies when you take damage Huh. Fight starts, the wearer gains 80% max HP. Doesn't heal for that amount. Okay, this... Hold on. This is the item... to put on the same character here. This... plus probably regen... Right, if we forge this. And it's got to be so the person with the dark scythe has to have this. So she's a nearly going to double her max HP, but not heal that. So she'll still be I mean, let's ignore the um let's ignore the flute or whatever, right? So she'd start to fight at 1000 HP, but 1800 max which means she'd be missing about, I don't know, like do the inverse of the math. I don't know. She'd be missing about 40% of her max HP or, or whatever the heck. So she'd gain an extra 40 spell power. That's kind of cool. And then I may as well leave this on her because we could stack extra mana regen and spell power on someone who's already going to have more. So she's going to have more spell power and more regen. So she'll span air spell more so we can do that. We can move it around. Four nights to be exact. Oh, there you go. I wasn't told there would be math. This is the reason I didn't play Lone Star today. Um, I mean, we got the money, so we may as well pick up more. Because we got a bunch of empty stat stats or slots. I'll just grab a Great Axe and I'll call that good enough. And we'll just go ahead and slap it on Agar. Sure. Okay. We're going to campfire. So we could change our Oregon again. Oregon. Origin. Every five mana regenerated with mana regen by the team deals spell damage equal to 15 times the amount of debuffs on the enemy with the most debuffs. Oh, that is kind of cool. For every 200 shield plus heal done, deal damage to the lowest percentage enemy equal to 35 spell damage per summon on the battlefield. That's a lot of text. It is kind of cool. So if you got a healing summon comp, the Raven Lord becomes awesome for that. The mech, for every five critical strikes done by the team, deal spell damage split between all enemies equal to 2% of the team's spell power. So a crit spell damage comp. Additionally, while a hero has 0.5 attack speed or less, so if you get slow attackers, their critical strikes instantly deal two additional critical strikes. Neat. I'm going to keep Archaic, though. I like it. We'll just research. Go out and choose by what sounds cool. Screw math. Yeah, I like that. Uh, Shield's lowest percentage HP hero. That's actually pretty nice. Every five shock on the enemy with the most shocks. We do shock a little bit. All heroes gain mana regen. Hey, man. How much shock... Do we do, or did I 
Maybe we didn't grab the shock guy. Because we'd see um, there'd be a shock symbol. No, I don't think we end up taking the shock comp. All heroes gain 1% attack speed for every two trophies you have. We could just not spend our trophies anymore and use the saddle. I think we'll take the dandelion. That's... That's a lot of dudes. Target the hero with the lowest HP with a death nato. Dealing 140 damage to all heroes struck. Oh, we kind of want to unline our heroes. You know what we can do? This is fine. They, all of them are going to turn and attack these two meliers. Although I can split it up a little bit more with maybe Emily up here. And mostly try to not have our people in a line. Yeah, the Joanna A AoE might be insane here. So I should potentially spend some trophies. Right, so attack speed's quite good for you. There you go. Uh, yeah, I can level you up again as well. Oh, these are awkward upgrades for Joanna. She did not roll any freaking um, damage, like a spell type stuff. I guess we maybe give her attack speed because attack speed translates to mana regen. Ugh, that is disappointing. The borders. Oh, no, I don't think these borders mean anything. I think they're just flavor. If they mean anything... Wow, it will it be a surprise to me. Look at her health. Like, it looks really bad, but we have to remember that um, her max is very high, so it'll look pretty poor. And we do have shielding and healing going on. Okay, that was fast, and she definitely led the damage bar. Like, it's so crazy, but it makes sense, right? It's a fight with a lot of uh, AoE potential, so she's going to do huge. Single target, she won't be quite as impressive. We get the saddle again. Flail. So this puts two Hextile buffs. So again, we could just drop a unit on there and get attack damage. Team size increased by one. Again. We can put Ola back in. <laughs> All heroes get plus one max mana. Again, max mana is poor because it slows down how often you cast, but... I think I like it. <laughs> Ola, congratulations. You're back on the team. Four seconds where either gains 8% attack damage, 1% mana regen at random. Tortoise shield. When the wearer receives damage from any source, they gain 9 max HP and receives a heal for the same amount. You get stronger over time. Oh, burning sword. Wearer has 1% chance per burn and bleed to stun the target for one second. Yeah. Let's grab that. And we'll go here. Ola, you're back on board here. Every attack. So this is scale well with attack speed, which the boots would have. Yeah, sure. Let's forward that, and we will give it back to um, to Blake, who had it. Sure. Yeah, you actually attack very quickly. I mean, we're scaling a lot of attack speed. But no, I think that's going to be nice. Okay. Um, these bugs, right, buff other people. You have the line attack bullshit, and so do you. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's any particular tech to go for here. Okay, go. It's so scary because right at the start of the fight, it looks like so many of our people are so heavily damaged. And I mean, admittedly, they kind of are. And we're so vulnerable to AoEs. Oh, we did lose someone there to the Death NATO. But it's nice having a big team. 
I do have a lot of a couple of level one heroes which are that much more likely to die. Um crystal damage, attack damage, HP. Same attack damage, defense versus HP. I'm not sure how those necessarily work out. Take a stone mace. Gonna spread some of these things up. We'll try to get people to at least level two to unlock a thing. I'm gonna do it this way because I want another campfire. It'll be another elite fight, which is gonna be fine. Uh, big angry guy. Big brain focus. Always targets the hero with the lowest HP. Death ball. When a hero dies, big angry guy gets 25% movement speed, attack speed, and life steal. Okay, that is gonna be annoying because they're gonna try to burn down one specific target without us being able to really do much about it. All right, Emily. Here's attacks 15 minutes and chance to rapidly attack an additional time. Well, that's interesting because again, she deals additional ethereal damage. Every four attacks, if the hero is below 50% HP, they gain 25 defense. Otherwise, they deal ethereal damage equal to the hero's defense to its target. So, I mean, this scales with attack speed and defense rating. Every time the hero heals a hero, can be self by any means, all heroes gain two spell power. Um, we could go and give Emily the magic potion, but I don't think that's the route we want to go for here. I think we might just give her the double attack. Oh, I miscalculated. I thought I had an extra click over here. I didn't relook at the total of trophies. That's kind of annoying. There might have been someone better to spend the trophies on, but oh well. Um, I don't think there's any strat here. He's just going to run for whoever. I mean, the best thing to do might be to just spread our people out at least so that he has to run around more. And he's going to go for Joanna. What, did she have the lowest absolute hit points or does he go for the lowest percentage HP? In which case we would have been able to predict that he would go for Joanna. I don't know. Oh, you reached rank two. Oh, of course you did. Um, so this is Ola, right, with the max mana mechanics. All summons gain attack speed equal 10% of the hero's shield, and you gain extra shield. And we already start with some shield. That's interesting. Oh, red drakes. Summon some red drakes. Yeah, man, more summons, more better. We all love summons. The hero with the highest max mana gains attack damage. Uh, cocktail. Five seconds in the fight, the hero with the highest max HP gives 38% of their max HP to all heroes, including themselves. So, Joanna is going to have the highest max HP. So, 38% of her max HP. So, everyone in the group gets increased based on 38% of Joanna's max HP. That seems pretty... And I would like more healing, uh, Kentos, I agree. This seems like a pretty good combo. We throw this on Joanna, and then maybe... But we don't throw it on Joanna. This this is not an item. We just throw more things to increase Joanna's max HP. Which she already scales with. All heroes gain minus two max mana, which is good. But lose 25% of the HP to start of the fight. I don't think we can mushroom. I think we're stacking too much of this shit. Critical strike chance on the long spear. Oh... It would be simple. Zephyrus always starts the fight on one of these tiles. I kind of want to try the cocktail shit, though. Now, if that means we have to sacrifice a relic, I can probably just drop the juicy mango. I think it's drop the juicy mango. Or we take the long spear. And Zephyrus just starts every fight on that. And, you know, theoretically, someone else starts on the other one. You kill your heroes by having too much HP loss. Yeah, I know, the mushroom? I know, right? I kind of want to try the cocktail. So that's interesting. This is the first time having to sacrifice something. Wait. 
I can't sacrifice the mango. No reforms in the fruit. Maybe because we've already, you know, we'd already gotten the advantage from it and the book doesn't show up. Because that makes sense. Because, I mean, it could, cause it could be a late game thing. Well, we got all the value out of these we can, so let's trash it now. Ah, I don't know about sacking the leaf. Now I don't think the cocktails is good value. Because I don't want to lose the team set. We could, I mean, we could consider dropping the fishing rod. We'd lose one person. Let's just pick up the spear. Critical strikes deals ethereal damage. And if they have at least five attack damage, they lose five attack damage to gain ethereal amplification. Every three seconds, the wearer heals the lowest percentage HP. Oh, we need a healing cloak. We need the healing cloak. So we can see the spears. So again, no matter what, Zephyrus is going to start on one of the two spears. And then the other one doesn't really matter too much. Um, I don't know if anyone else... No one else is really scaling with crit. If anyone else had increased crit damage, but no one does, I don't think it matters much. There. Healing nearby enemies. I think we'd like to target down the Shaman. Targets two random heroes. Gain attack speed, two random heroes. Taking down the Shaman quick would actually be excellent. So, what do we morph the Healing Cloak with? I mean, it doesn't combo with anything other than it'd be nice, perhaps, to have it on something with spell power. None of these have spell power. So, maybe just something that's got a lot of hit points, just to hope that it minimizes the chance that they, they die. Because we still want them healing. So, maybe just this. Uh, and we'd want this on someone tanky because we need them to be able to survive. So we've got some defensive items on Agar here. So I think I'll do that. We might move it around later. We'll see. And this is a great fight for Joanna's AoE too. Yeah. So much damage there. And we're going to want to level up Agar. Okay. Swap passes, reroll passes. We don't need another hero. Uh, the Harvester Shield, I think, would have been great to combine with that cloak. We might go, next time we hit a shop, we might deforge the cloak and apply it to the Harvester Shield. Because the heal scales with spell power and the defense means that the person doing the healing is less likely to die. I mean, this is great for critical strike chance. Um, what is Zephyr's itemization looking like right now? Is there anything we'd want to pull out? I mean, arguably, the dagger would be better for him maybe than the musket because he's got a huge crit chance. And so we'd want to start stacking crit damage on there. But I think I kind of like the idea of reforging that. Let's improvise staff on Ola. And for now, the Harvester Shield. I think I might just give to her or Emily. Uh, oh yeah, it's spell power, so. I mean, this also scales with spell power, of course. But. For ethereal attack scale with spell power, we'll just do it that way. Um, Yeah, do we want to reroll a passive on someone? or swap things. Every time the hero lands, a hero critical strikes an attack. I think what we'd like to do is we'd like to move team speed over to Zephyrus, although he's already got team speed. So I don't know what that does. I 
Maybe we reroll a team speed. Maybe we don't trust that team speed can stack. Therefore, you want to reroll Joanna's team speed and maybe get her something that's better for her. Let's just do this. So on cast, the hero gains 12 spell power. The hero's critical strike chance. No, every time a hero attack. No. All right, we'll take transcendent power on cast. The hero gains 12 spell power, so she'll get more powerful over time. Um, we were mentioning maybe moving the cloak to Joanna. I don't think we want to remove one of her items. Again, we could do a swap or origin, but we'll just research. We don't generate a, a massive amount of healing right now, but we do have a couple of healing sources, so Toma healing would be okay. Um... Uh, I think Molten Stone, I think I ran into this, but for shock on my, uh, the one I, I YouTubed. I think this is really nice if you're not generating it, because it just sets them to the max immediately. Sift, choose and duplicate another one of your combat relics. Click on Sift to see the available relics that can be duplicated. All hero attack, oh, yeah, no, not that one. Sift for more heroes. No, I'm going to say no. I mean, duplicating the dandelions or the wings would be interesting. Or we just get the Tome of Healing. I'm not, I don't want more heroes. Oh, we can't duplicate the heroes anyway. See, depending on the timing, see if the leaf mass triggers after we take the healing damage, like if we take, lose the hit points from, um, say the fishing rod and then the leaf math triggers it's the same amount i wonder how that works i'm just gonna take the tome we could use more healing that's more healing all right what the hell are you malroth crystal life right i've seen this so you have the crystal life over here which i think we need to burn down first every attack he heals all enemies including himself and excluding the crystal life for 100 of its attack damage whenever the crystal life gets destroyed malroth loses the regeneration attack passives and when Malroth dies, all enemies instantly die. So we need to, I, I mean, we could just maybe burn down Malroth. He doesn't have a lot of health. I think what we do is we try to kill this crystal group over here. Um, so we'll put Zephyrus in charge of tanking some damage over here. But there's a dude back here too. It's fine. And then otherwise. Oh, where's the, uh, the two crit spears are over on this end of things. That's a little annoying, because again, we want to get the crit chance on Zephyrus. We might just have to sacrifice Ola. <laughs> while we focus down this area. We want attack speed on Agar because he can inflict more frost and burn from attack speed. He's got some nice procs. Go. Zeft has 95% once he's in the fight. So he needs the spear to get up there. I think he's sitting at, I don't remember, it was something like 60% um, before the dagger. Okay. We're getting awfully low. All right. All right. All right. It's all good. Everything's fine. That giant sword is awesome. Okay, everything's fine. We could recruit another hero. Probably we're just going to leave them on the bench. All heroes get plus 1% critical strike chance for every summon in the battlefield. Oh my god. Oh, and you summon? Summons two buff bots that rapidly lose HP. The buff bots each provide a buff to all heroes except Savos. Buffs equal to 15% of the bonus attack speed, attack damage, or spell power, whichever is the highest on Savos. Oh my god. Savos would actually work. I might not throw him in here, though. Gain attack damage. Here was the highest max mana gains 35% attack speed, but the max mana is increased by 6%. 
So Ola would gain attack speed and she'd gain even more max mana. Now, she wouldn't be able to trigger the da Dragon Dance as often, which is too bad because, you know, it's theoretically quite good. Although she gets attack speed, which every time she hits, she'll gain a mana, and more max mana means more mana regen. Yeah, sorry, if I said 6%, that was a that was a mis mean, that was a misclick in my brain. I knew it was a fixed six. So she's gonna go to 16 max mana, which means she'll have five mana regen. Like from her ability over here. I don't know, maybe co coffee means? Wait, hold on, all heroes gain 90% critical strike damage. Oh, no, we should tentacle. <laughs> A, a, we're globally getting increased crit strike chance from some things we've got going on and obviously that would continue to make Zephyrus a death machine it is interesting because coffee beans would work with Ola but I'm going to take the tentacle the old Baron, magic steal so your magic damage heals life uh, wearer gains 30% attack damage at the start of the fight. Every second, the wearer deals ethereal damage to their target equals 50% attack damage. The wearer is damaged for 100% of physical damage they deal. Okay. On cast, the wearer consumes all shock on their target. We don't really do a lot of shock stuff. Destiny. Attack speed. Every attack, the wearer gains 6% health received. So it doesn't heal them. It just makes heals on them bigger. And attack speed is quite good for us. I think we'll probably just do this. What happens when there's more than 100% crit chance? Well, we did see an item that said, with that item at least, if you went over or every 1%, it would turn into crit damage instead. I don't know if that's a general rule or just what happened with that particular item. Okay, so. Yeah, this is going to be great. This is Zephyrus's musket. We want Zephyrus to attack fast and crit, like generate more crits. And also they do, they do heal. So I think we just go and do this. And give that back to Zephyrus. And again, we want to hit maximum campfires, which no matter what, we can hit two. I think I'll hit an early shop. We got money. Although this way would generate a bunch of star and elites, which is fun. On the other hand, this would we'd finally get some exclamation marks, which we haven't done all game. Yeah, let's go for events. Classic sword. Yeah, he's got a sword gun. I'm gonna go there, pick up that crit. I don't know, you're a higher level person, you'll go there and do that. And... I think clustering's fine. Yeah. All right, let's go. Oh, that's right, I want to reforge the cloak. Yeah, so, I mean, we got to be a little worried about the boss because that's where things could go badly. But overall, things are feeling very well. Hey, Valeria, thank you very much for the raid. We raided Valeria Monday or last week. Maybe it was last Thursday uh, playing some BG3. Excellent channel. Sorry, sorry I missed your stream today. Uh, let's get this. Let's pick up an item. Attacks of a 12% chance to the wearer's current target. We do have some people with some pretty good attack speed. So anchors kind of nice. Uh, additional attack damage equal to percentage of their max HP. I mean, we could throw this on um, Joanna. No, she's capped on items because she has uh, some pretty crazy max HP. And every attack, the wearer gains 50 max HP. Stacks 15 times at 15 stacks gains 40 defense. That is interesting in general. Uh, just gaining max HP doesn't mean anything unless you've got heals to back it up or some other synergy. I, don't, I think I like Anchor. Blake's got our best attack speed right now. I think we give the anchor to Blake. They're ranged as well. They're less likely to die. So we do this and um, oh, we'll have to craft something for Blake then. Really, we'd want to combo anchor with something that's got attack speed. 
So I think what we'll do is we'll throw it on to these, these leather boots. And then we'll give that to Blake. Increasing their attack speed further. And yeah, 12% chance to stun whenever they hit. Just turn him into a machine gun is going to be wonderful. Okay, I like this. And yes, thank you for reminding me. I wanted to maybe dismantle the cloak. No, this cloak. And put it on something um, that's got like maybe spell power, right? Yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't have forged right away because we're about to hit a shop. So yeah, this, so we'll heal more if we have more spell power. And other than that, like a spell power plus defense item might be nice. Which currently we, oh, we could put it with the harvester shield. I think that was kind of the idea, but let's see what else is around. We can pick up some more muskets. Spell power max HP, hold on, I think that's what we're gonna wanna buy. Critical strikes done by any hero inflicts bleeds on all enemies, only if operative when the wearer is the top damage dealer of the party. We don't have a good way of predicting this because Joanna usually does the most damage um, if there's multiple targets because she's got great AOE, but for single target, it's possibly not her. So I don't think we can predict the Dragon Blood Netlist. Although if you want to see this put to good use, you can watch my YouTube video on this game. This is an awesome item for Ola. Right, give her more max mana, which scales well with other things, and then she gets more attack damage out of it. Crown of Life, every six seconds, the wearer heals all heroes for 5% of the wearer's max HP. Do we have to rethink what Joanna is wearing? So she wants the protector's helmet still, which has got the max HP boost, and I like the mana regen, that's fine. Yeah, this art style is great. Now, the developer of this game, this was apparently a solo indie project, one person for three years. Um, I do think they they contracted out um, for the artwork, you know, like, which very legit. Like, yeah, that's still that's still kind of a solo project. Or, you know, bought things from asset stores and things like that, like maybe icon packs. Could You could definitely do this sort of thing. The amount of complexity in this game for a solo project and the fact that this has been like rock solid state, I think... Technically, let me load this up. I think on the Steam page, it's still they still considering this an early access game. Because it, it just released like last week. But it's very solid. I mean, the big question is, once you play it a bunch, as you keep going and increasing difficulty, does, does it stay compelling there? Okay, I gotta I gotta make a decision here. We gotta keep this moving along. Um I kinda wanna try the crown of life. And I do want to do gold ring stuff. I just don't know what that's going to look like. We've got to put the crown of life on Joanna. And then the gold ring has tons of max HP, which goes well with this, and the spell power, which will go well with Joanna. So I think we do this. And then I can pull probably the mask the druid off of her. Yeah. It's the, the mask of druid is excellent on her still because it gives her a bunch of spell power, which does work well for her. But perhaps what we'll do is we can move the mask of the druid over to Pyro. Poor guy was our starting pick and hasn't gotten any item love at all. So this will give him a bunch of spell power, some extra mana regen so he can flaming meteor some more. Um, I guess he doesn't generate burn. I think that's fine. Now the healing cloak. Yeah, with this, we just want spell power and sturdiness, so it's still a good combo with the Harvester Shield. It's spell power and makes the person holding the healing item less likely to die. So we're going to do that, and then the question is, who do we put it on? Um, I think the answer is just not a frontliner, and I think we probably put on a Pyro. So he'll get more spell power, which is going to be great. He's unlikely to die. Um because he's not a frontliner, so it's probably okay. And then we still have this stone mace we can throw on someone, um, which 
doesn't really matter. I mean, in theory, someone with higher attack rate because then they'll benefit more from the attack damage. The HP is probably good on a frontliner. So I think I'm just going to put it on Aegir. He's got a good attack rate, solid frontliner. Let's do that. We've got a crap ton of trophies to level up some people. Now, our spears are all over there. Again, we definitely need Zephyrus to start on one of those. After that, it doesn't matter too much. Okay, what are, what are we facing here? Reaper with a Death Tornado. That's annoying. Defensive form. Uh, damage reduction. I don't know if we can get around this. Hacker's damage, 3% of the hero's max HP. He gets corruption. Okay. It's actually a very annoying formation because I'd really love to rush the Reaper, but I guess it's not to be. I think we kind of maybe want to spread out a little to minimize the Death Tornado stuff and just generally avoid being in the line. These guys will run up. Maybe I'll go here because they'll pick up their, their spears and then run forward. Oh, that's probably be okay. Okay, everything's equipped. Theoretically, everything's okay. Uh, oh, trophies. That's right. Um, Lifesteal for missing HP. She doesn't auto attack very much, so lifesteal's not going to be that much, although she will have huge amounts of missing HP. When gaining a shield from any source, which we do get, get attack speed for each hero and summon on the battlefield. We have a lot of heroes and a lot of summons, and you are going to get shields. Attack speed does generate to mana regen, which is good. Okay, you know what? The Agile Katana is the best pick for her. Uh, I've got eight more trophies. Screw it. Zephyrus is our star. Gains life steal equal to 15% of their defense. Every five seconds, hero gains shield per summon. Spell power is increased by 10% of their current shield. When the fight starts, the hero gains 150 shield. Well, that's interesting. That uh, would just make your leech life more powerful. No, I'm going to go with uh, the summoner shield, so you keep regenerating a shield on you. Yeah, I know the tanks are back here, but they got to pick up their spears. That's the thing with these um, these items that put the like the hex boosts. They're, they're often very powerful, but they lead to you having really stupid um, formation sometimes. Because you're forced to put, you know, one hero on each one of those. Well, you're not forced, but if you want to benefit from it. So we did have someone drop, so we lose a little flame, but overall we're doing okay. Another recipe item. Tax speed for each bleed. We don't stack bleed. Something with burn. Or we'll take the fire tome. Where are we at? We got 13 minutes to the schedule in the stream, which we'll see. We'll go here. I'm not going to change origin. We're just going to research and pick up a new relic. Random hero gains an additional item slot permanently. Wow. Randomly selected from all the heroes on the board, not benched. In addition, the Reto pack contains a random legendary recipe and a superior heirloom. Oh, Beast Area is interesting. So you gain four spirit summons. These I don't believe show up on the board. They just count as four additional summons for things that scale based on the number of summons you have. Reto pack would require us to sacrifice an item. This sounds really good. I'll just take the bestiary just because we've got some combo and we know it's working. So we'll just do that and keep pushing forward here. So this will be another fight. So this these spear placements are much better this time around. Much, much better. What the hell are you? A lich? Summons an orb at the furthest corner from the Lich's position. The orb sends two interceptable beams towards the furthest and closest hero, each dealing spell damage, inflicting corruption. Whatever, we'll just we'll just kill you. Deals damage split between its target and nearby heroes. Okay, well, we'll put two maliers on each side. Just murder, death, kill. Go. Oh, our, our dino is having a hard time getting through. Because we built a line. All right. I mean, the combat, it's a, it's a, it's, there's a mess. There's a lot of things going on. So you kind of have to have faith that your synergy is working out. See, look at this. So in this fight, Joanna was third for damage instead of absolutely dominating it. I'm just going to get a book, book of mana. 
Olaf, congratulations for getting yourself a heavy mace. All right, let's see our first event. More treasure. While exploring the evil kingdom, you come across not one, but two massive chests. You think to yourself, that's it, we made it. On second thought, you wonder, what are such massive chests doing in the middle of the evil kingdom? Hmm, You, your heart starts beating twice as fast. Boom, kaboom, boom, kaboom, boom, kaboom, boom, kaboom. So, 40% chance to find money, 60% chance to dot, 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 which is presumably bad. What do we need money for? Nothing. So I'm just going to leave it. Sorry. All right, let's go find an elite. Whoa! Let's go fight many elites. Skeleton Titans. Uh, deal damage to nearby heroes gains damage reduction. In Rage and Death, when other Skeleton Titans die... Again. So, in theory, we'd like to kill all these at about the same time. That's obviously kind of a challenging ask. But if we do something like that, our targets are going to be split. This is the opposite of what you normally like to do, which is burn down. Um, you shouldn't be frontlining. Well, I guess we, I guess we only have so many people. Mystery chest could be anything, even a boat. <laughs> is that a quote from a movie? So this is Emily with the ethereal stuff and no items. Oh, I shouldn't have prioritized buffing her. Just get some HP so you don't die as often. This is Ola. Let's use some crazy things. Defense, attack damage, attack speed, life steal. Gaining attack damage per max mana. So if you if you the dragon dance goes off, she'll scale well with attack speed. And I guess she's gonna be she's got a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll just give her I'll just give her attack speed. Okay, go. This is this is gonna be a challenging fight. Okay, it looks like their raw damage output isn't too high. The first one died, so they've all just gotten buffed. Another one died, another one died. Okay, that was pretty well synced up. Okay, good. Oh, I, this mushroom is really cool, but we're losing too many HP at the start of the fight anyway. We can just stop spending trophies and get attack speed. Six, nine seconds into a fight, all heroes receive a heal equals 45% of the max mana, but lose all their current mana. All heroes gain life steal. You know what? I'm just going to get bananas. Um, life steal. They heal. Every attack a hero heals, lowest HP. Oh, more healing. You know what? That's good. And we do have healing synergy. Chess game! You meet with a strange old lady propose you to play a game of Yugdabaro chess. What? You asked her to repeat the name of the game. Yug, dab, ra, yug, dab, ra. She repeats while pointing at you. Anyway, it's a black magic chess variation that she invented. If you win, you shall be rewarded for a lifetime. But if you lose, you should be cursed for some time. So 6% chance to get buff chess winner. Every fight, one hero at random starts with minus 3 max mana. But that could target someone that we'd be annoyed with. 40% chance instead we get chess loser. All heroes start the fight with plus 2 max mana last two fights. We're about to fight the end game boss. This is a terrible time for this to happen. Like, this is the final boss right here. Sorry. I know it's, like, cool to, like, gamble. All heroes get plus 25% shield received, 35% max mana. It's not heal, but more max mana scales with something. We'd have to sack an item, though. And heroes' HP is consumed before their shield, unless below 25%. Which, again, scales really nicely with Joanna. I don't know what item we'd want to sacrifice, though. Every three seconds deal spell damage to the highest HP enemy equal to 20% the spell power of the hero with the least spell power. All heroes gain magic steal. Claws. All heroes gain 21% attack speed but gain 2 max mana. I'm very tempted by the claws. Yeah, <laughs> let's skip all the elites to the events. Also, Quill skips all the events. Yeah, but I have to admit, the events in this game, I think I think they need a pass. So far, I haven't found a lot of events that I felt like, oh, yeah, that's great. Let's totally do it. I, I have a couple of gray items I haven't equipped. No. There's some items that show up in the forge over here because they haven't been merged. And yeah, we do have these items. I guess I didn't use the fire tome before, but we were trying to go fast. I definitely want to use the healing pouch. I'm just going to get the claws. I don't know if it's brilliant. 
it's going to be good for some of our characters. All right, so we're going to be doing the boss here. Let's take a look at him. Xena! Yeah, 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 yeah! That, I don't know how many people have watched Xena Warrior Princess, but... Uh, Sapphire Strike. Cat Sapphire... Oh, this one with the three forms. Yeah, yeah. So they all have a, a strike that does various shit. These two split their damage. Um, this one's in a line, right? And this one is... Uh, yeah. Split between nearby heroes. Could heal. And this just hits the lowest hero. And then they're all linked as well. Whenever a Zeo God dies, they all die. Every since six, six seconds, the Zeo Gods get healed to the Zeo God with the highest HP. So... I think there's two ways you can handle this. Either you can maybe see if you can, as long as you can kill one of these within six seconds, you can just focus fire them and then you just win. But in practice, I think what you have to do is you have to do damage to all of them because they're going to keep getting resynced to the one with the most HP. So we'll probably have to do that. Um, remember, remind me to forge items in a second here. Let's put you over there. Let's put you over there. We'll put you there. We'll put you over here. Um... Yeah, attack speed is good. You know what? Forge that. And give you back to... Um, oh, you're a Blake, but maybe you're on Agar? Ethereal Amplifications. Yeah, so we want this one on... Um, Emily, who I don't think has an item. Very burn on the enemy with the highest burn. Sure. Let's do that. We'll spread some things around. This is going to be fine. Um. Oh. Oh, wait. An ad break started. What? Oh, shit. I missed the snooze by 15 seconds. Waiting until ad is over to do boss fight. So how's everyone doing? So we can give someone 25 more XP. So just these two would benefit from it. No ads skip even appeared for me yet. Now Twitch is, ugh. Congratulations, the wiener is you, Blake. Hero gains 20% uh, ethereal amplification when the fight starts and deals an additional 20 ethereal damage. You do have a high attack speed, so just adding flat 20 extra HP attack wouldn't be bad. Oh! More summons? And that's not bad. No, more summons, man. Done. Get all the summons. Yeah, so max H max mana is usually bad, to clarify. Um, because the way it works in here is at the start of the fight, your characters actually start with like zero mana, and then every attack, or if they have mana regen, that increases, and every time their mana bar fills up, they cast their spell. So you, their, their mana bar is almost like a cooldown bar, is what it is, right? So having a higher max mana is bad. Although we're stacking on an Ola because she actually scales up with, I mean, the mana dragon mostly makes the max mana break even, right? So higher max mana means it takes longer to charge her abilities. Mana dragon gives her more mana regen to try to balance that out. But the big thing is the higher her max mana is she will gain more benefit from the dragon dance. But everyone else wants low mana as much as possible so that they can fire their abilities off more consistently. So we got 42 seconds left to the add. Then we'll start the boss fight. Yeah, I think this is a swell game. And it's pretty cheap. Well, I mean, it's not I don't. It's not dirt cheap. It's 23 Canadian buckaroonies. So, you know, don't know what's going to be in your region, but it's pretty good. Nice. Uh, you know, again, if this uh, apparently is a solo dev game, which is nuts. And Lone Star. Yeah, Lone Star was even cheaper. Yeah. Is it around 10 bucks? 15? Yeah, no, twelve ninety nine, Canuckian. Very, very solid game. All right, ad break is over. Let's start this fight. So what we'll see is we'll keep seeing these bosses keep healing themselves up to the one who has the most HP. So we're sort of hoping to damage them all kind of evenly. It looks like these two are going to go there, these two are going to go there, and then three will hit your top. So be it. 
and then the summons will do whatever. Yeah, the uh, Joanna's AoE is not going to do much this fight because they're all spread out. Single target people are generally going to do better here. Um, our heroes are fully healed. Like, our heal is clearly working very well. Yeah. I mean, these guys here look like they've got some damage, but it's actually shield. This white area is shield they've got. It's these black parts here that is missing HP. Oh, we crushed that. Crush it. What does 75% progress mean? Well, we unlocked a couple of new things. Mana Weaver and Summoner's Awakening. Hey, Syfak. Thanks for the sub. Sorry I haven't been addressing a lot of them. I've been trying to rush a little bit here. Cool. So this unlocks a new difficulty now. If we were to go back over here to Ascension, we now have Adventure difficulty. So enemy difficulty go up. We heal a little less after the boss. And so I don't know how much the scales. Again, I haven't tried this, um, this endless mode yet. Mostly because, again, Ascension as I understand it, unlocks the higher difficulty modes. So I figure I'll do a bunch of Ascension, and then at some point we'll try Endless. And then we've got this challenge over here, which... Oh, there's a bunch of different challenges. Beam size reduced by two, so three heroes. Heroes can equip six items instead of three. Additionally, start the run with a thousand extra gold. Heroes in Act 1 gain 40% attack speed when the fight starts, but in Act 3, enemies gain 85% max HP. I like because I think it kind of makes sense because I think with fewer heroes, like they can fit a lot of items on, but you're not going to have items at the start. You did get the extra gold, so you can target an early shop, but you're not going to have the items, so you'll be weaker at first. So you get the attack speed, but by the time you get to Act Three, because of all the slots, your heroes are. It's probably going to be like Baldur's Gate in Act Three, where at this point, because of the item combos you've built, your heroes are like god tier, unstoppable super monsters, and so they're needing to buff the HP there. Ah. Yeah, spoilers, Baldur's Gate 3 gets easier the further you get into the game. Act 1, definitely the hardest part of uh, Baldur's Well, some of the bosses later on are pretty challenging too, but... Mm -hmm. Passive Frenzy. Gain the default passive of all other heroes and gain the effect of their passive default passive thrice. <laughs> These are some really cool little uh, challenge modes. I like that. You can see, and the, the thing with games like this, and the same reason Slay the Spire was so good, is because it's got unlimited room for continued development, right? You can keep adding more heroes, items, and relics, although you have to do it a little bit carefully because um, adding them willy-nilly can dilute the pool and make it harder to find the functional combos and sometimes make it less good. But you can also mix it up by adding more enemies, more of those random game modes. Um, it could also be something where you have, uh, you could do something with almost like different item sets. Slay the Spire sort of does that because with the different heroes you can run, they each have their own unique card pool, but also there are certain relics that only show up for some of the heroes that you can play in Slay the Spire. You could see something like that, you know, being implemented at some point in the future if you're feeling like these item pools are being too too split up. Seasonal item sets. You could have rotating items. I mean, that could be something more like for maybe for some of the optional modes, but you know, those could be could be done. Um, because yeah, we get this codex here and like we haven't seen we haven't seen half the stuff in the game. We haven't seen all the heroes like I haven't picked all the heroes, but I haven't even seen all the heroes, nor have I unlocked all the heroes. Origins as well. And then all the relics like there's so much more left to be seen here. I mean, just again, this is my this is my third game, right? The two on novice, my warm up, the one I did for YouTube. We unlocked Adapt doing that. So I did that. So next one will just be on the next one up. Mm hmm. And we're going to wrap up the stream here. Tomorrow, we will have another bonus Baldur's Gate 3 stream, and it will be the finale. Technically, there's still a couple of side quests that we could do, but we've done all the companion quests. We've done everything. Tomorrow, I am going, and I'm not going to spoil it for, like, Valkyrie is still here. Or Valkyria? Um, <laughs> we're just going for the final boss tomorrow which is my understanding is in part of a dungeon. So there's going to be some stuff to do in there, but that's good you're going to do. So we're finishing Baldur's Gate 3 tomorrow. What a journey, what a journey. And then finally I can get back to Baldur's Gate 2, which has been on hiatus for forever. And that'd be nice to do it. Valeria, thank you. I'm like, like there's a K in there. No, that's the UK. So it's not Valkyrie. It's Valkyrie. No. I don't know that I'm dyslexic, but every now and again, I wonder if maybe... 
Anyway, that's it. We're going to go and raid a kiss for luck, who, as I understand, is doing some Minecrafty things today. And we will see you tomorrow for the grand conclusion of Baldur's Gate 3. Bye, everyone.